I'm Claire from Creative the Ottaway. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! in the UK. Um, what does that mean? Oh, it means that I love paper crafting. Well, I actually love any craft, but particularly paper crafting. And I love Stampin' Up! products and was keen to get the discount, so I joined up. Um, I've now got a little team and we're like one big crafting family. So we do lots of crafting together, lots of sharing ideas and supporting each other so if you're interested in anything like that then just get in touch um, stamping up we've got a mini catalogue out at the moment full of spring fresh products and new ideas and until the end of february they've got this little celebration brochure that's got extra goodies that you can earn free with a qualifying spend so what are we making today well, we're actually making an old style card, but just jazzing it up a bit. So I've got a couple of cards here. I'll show you this one first. So looks very unassuming there. I've used some of the um, stylish shapes dies just to do the front. But actually what happens is you pull that bit sideways and you've got this lovely panel. And it's actually an easel card, but it's one that stands up like that. So I guess I've seen a few around and they've called them vertical easel cards. So this is just my take on that. Okay, it's really a nice little make, super simple, but really effective. And you can post it, so even better. So that's the first one that I made. Um, I made that with celebration paper um, that I absolutely love. But then I thought, okay, use some of your old stosh, stosh stash which isn't old it's just not in the new catalogue um, and I've made this one um, I made a similar card like this before and everybody really loved it including me so it's exactly the same card just to show you how different it looks um, I've embossed the two panels on the front and there's a die in that set now where did I put that set so it is the Blossoming happiness dies. So let me show you what I mean because it looks very unassuming. So it's just that. But when you die cut, it leaves some of it, it cuts out, and some of it leaves. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful when you layer with a different colour. I mean, I've done silver there. But so that is there. And so the stamp um, that I've used on the front and on the inside is the happiness bouncer. So I actually really love that as well. The rectangles on the front are from uh, the stitched rectangle dies because I love stitched rectangles. So we're going to make one today. Um, what do you need? Let me move these out the way. So I'm going to put that one back there, put that one back there in case I need to refer it. You don't need very much, okay? Um, I'll show you how to do the basics and then off you go and make your own version of it. Jazz it up, play it down, use old stash, new stash, mix what you've got really. Um, I get really sad, yeah, sad is the word, when people have bought loads of stuff and then they say they haven't even opened it, they haven't got round to it. Just, just open it, get it out and have a play. So... The paper that I'm going to use today is from the mini catalogue, here, um, Regency Park, I, I needed that to tell me because I can't remember it yet, um, beautiful 6x6 six six papers, okay, lots of pretty different colours, quite bold colours, um, with a few subtles mixed in, and if I just flip it over quickly, lots of navies in it, I, I really do like navy, um, so yeah, I'm really loving this, but I haven't had a chance to play with it. So we're going to play with two of the colours out of that. The colours that I've picked, I've just mixed in. <laughs> oh my God. So I need that one and, oh look, there they are at the back. The two colours that I've, uh, two patterns that I've picked are these. Okay, does anyone need this anymore? Let me, shall I go through that with you? Base card is six inches by eight and a half. And we're gonna score that twice. And then we just need some panels. So you need two panels that are two inches by five and seven eighths. And one panel 
that's five and seven eighths by one and three quarters. The writing area is the piece of card that's in the back, this bit. I just did a whole big piece um, rather than trying to match it up. Less stress that way. So I will put those out of the way, bring the paper back. Ta -da! Um, so I've taken my inspiration for my card um, base from these colours. That, so the colours that are in here are, is Mango Melody and Night of Navy. And how I know that is that Stampin' Up! are amazing at putting the colours on the paper. So if you're just starting out and you don't know what stash you need, pick a paper pack and then pick a couple of colours that are on there that are going to coordinate and then maybe get an ink or some ribbon and, and you know that whatever you make is going to come together and you'll be like, ta-da, I've done it. Okay, without any stress. Remember, crafting should be stress-free. So, Night of Navy, Mango Melody. Um, I think I'm going to do the base card Night of Navy and the panels Melon Mango. Oh, goodness me, just not the camera. Because they really go nice. Although that goes nice, that's a bit of... of too much of a contrast for me so the panels are going to be in mango so how do I do that so I need my paper trimmer and it has gone missing right here it is Rosie was sitting on it okay so what did I need six inches by eight and a half so I know that this long bit here needs to be the eight and a half um, and this bit needs to be six. So I'm going to put it on the short end and cut it at six inches. Now, I'm really short and my camera is really high. So I just want to make sure that you can see it. So six inches is right there, right on the edge, almost. So six inches and this will fit in a standard envelope in the UK. So you're not going to need that bit. We just put that onto that side. This trimmer has got an arm that comes out. Just open it wide, and we are looking at eight and a half inches. So that is there, and just make sure that that's butted right up to the top there, so that you get a straight edge. And then cut that bit off. So there's another bit. You could use that for your circles on the front if you want. Now. You've got that piece there, and what we're going to do is on the long side, we're going to score it at two and one eighth. Okay, so remember scoring, not cutting, so move that blade out of the way. And really give it a nice firm push down on the scoring blade, then slide it along and do it at four and two eighths, which is four and a quarter. So that's about there. And that's it. You're nearly done. So that gets folded over. Do I need this in here? No, let's put that out of the way for a minute. That gets folded over, like so. And I get my bone folder. I'll just make sure I've got a nice crisp crease. And that goes there, like so. So that is your easel card. Amazing, how quick is that? So which bit should we do next? Should we do the front panels? Okay, so let's stand that out of the way. Remember, I'm gonna do a contrasting color that matches in with my paper. So I'm gonna get my um, Mango Melody. What a lovely name. And this needs to be two inches by five and seven eighths. So, I'm going to do two inches first, and I need to cut it two inches by five and seven eighths. So basically, it's an eighth of an inch smaller than your front panel. So we'll do the same again two inches, and it's five and seven eighths, uh, five. Seven eighths. Okay. Right. 
So that's there. So there's those two. Now, the paper that's going to go on the top of that needs to be an eighth of an inch smaller. So two inches, an eighth smaller is one and seven eighth. So I'm just going to cut those at the same time. One and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths, an inch smaller is five and three quarters. So I'm just going to check that now. So that just goes on and you just get a nice border all the way around. So I am loving that. Do the same with this one. So two inches and an eighth less. One and seven eighths. This is a lovely paper. Oh, Rosie. Do you know what? I can't, I can't tell you how many times I've stopped and started this video. Because um, either somebody wants to go out, somebody wants to come in. Um, somebody wants to eat, somebody knocks on the door, it's crazy. Okay, so there for the front, those two ones there. Okay, so they are going to go there and I'm going to cut the inside a bit as well. Now the inside panel is slightly smaller because it's one and three quarter inches. Let me just let that cut out. Hang on, hang on Rose, I'm coming. And... Five and three quarters. There you go. Done. So that was one and three quarters by five and seven eighths. So uh, I don't want this paper as my side panel here. So I'm going to get some of this paper and that's going to make it contrast. I could just flip the paper over, um, but because I'm using Mango Melody, um, it's nice, but not as nice as that one. Or do you disagree? What's on the other side of this? <gasps> that's quite nice as well. This is the problem. Do you have this problem the same as me? Every time I've decided on the paper, I start playing, putting it together, and I'm like, oh, actually, I prefer this side. Okay, so this one, the card is five and seven eighths by one and three quarters. So this one is one and five eighths by five and six eighths. And that is just going to go like that. So, should we stick those together? Uh, this is where I realise I haven't brought the glue through. No, we've got some glue. There's bound to be something. I always go, oh, I forgot. I just got to pop over right in the craft room and get this. Talk amongst yourselves. Not today, Claire. Okay, that goes on there. Oh, I really like this paper. I've not really used Mango Melody before very much, I don't think. Love how Stampin' Up! makes you use things you wouldn't normally, just by putting them together. I do use navy a lot. I like navy. What do I normally put with navy? Hmm, all sorts, really, but I don't think I've put um, Mango Melody with it. Right, let's make sure I get this right. So that's going on, on there as well. So I saw this design on Split Coast Stampers. Oh my goodness, all the wonderful designs that were on there. You just absolutely lose a couple of days, don't you? Okay, so thank you to them. And this one is just going to go on there. Like so. Right, so I've done my three panels. What else do I need to do before I start putting it together? I need a back piece for inside the card. See, I knew there'd be something I forgot. Let's do some white. Okay, so the back panel 
is going to be four and one eighth. Let's cut this thrifty. Four and one eighth. Okay. By five and seven eighths. Five and seven eighths. Like so. Okay. So that's going to come in there. Like that. That's going to go on there, but we're going to higher. That's going to go in there. That's going to come there, but we're going to put some dimensionals behind that just so that it's a bit higher. Okay. Hmm, I'm not sure if I like that white border around it. Although, it's okay. Is it though? Hmm, we'll come back to that. That bit's going on there, and that bit's going on there. So, what do we need to do now? I think I need to sort this border out. I'm not happy with that. Have I done this slightly smaller? Yeah, I have. Okay. Why did I do that? What could have I done wrong there? Let me double check that. Oh, yeah, I didn't do it five and seven eighths. Oh, my goodness. Okay, one and three quarters. Let's quickly do this. I told you it was one of those days, didn't I? Five and seven eighths. Okay. And then this is one and five. Five and six. So the one that I just did was slightly too small by about an inch, but it makes a difference because when I put that on there, you won't see any white. And that is exactly what I wanted. So remember, there's no mistakes in crafting. That panel will become the centerpiece of my next creation or not. <laughs> It will go to the side with all the piles of other bits and pieces and then one day it will be the star. So, that's going to go on there, that's going to go on there. Should we do some stamping first? Oh, I feel like we should. Let's get a block. And where's that lovely stamp set? The one that's called Happiness of Bounds. So I'm going to use this bit that says wishing you all the happiness you can imagine. Because that's one of my favourite sayings. And I need to go... Ooh, need the Knight of Navy ink. Okay. Where is that one? Do you know what? right in front of me do you do that honestly sometimes you just get like exasperated with yourself don't you you put something down and then straight away it's like you can't see it and then it's there again maybe there's a crafting fairy a naughty elf okay i'm gonna I know it looks weird because I'm doing it sideways so that you can see. But there you go. So I haven't stuck that, but I didn't want the sentiment to be half hidden underneath. So, now that isn't straight, is it? Oh, goodness me. That definitely doesn't look straight. Good thing paper or card has two sides. Right, let's try that again. might have to see the top of my head just so I can see what I'm doing and I'll go really quiet because I need to concentrate <laughs> okay right break there I think we've got it Ta -da! look nothing to see here all done okay so put some glue on that Let's put this in before we forget which side it was. 
So just putting some Tombow glue on there, putting that so it's got a bit of a navy frame all the way around. It's only a tiny little border that you can see, but it's enough. Picking the right ones of this, so put that one out the way. Getting some dimensional. Putting this on the back. So it hasn't got hardly any weight. It might have a flower on it in a minute. But the minute, but it's not going to have anything much. It's not got anything heavy. So I'm not going to overdo it on the dimensionals because you don't need to. The reason you're putting dimensionals on is so that it stands higher so that when you put your folded card to it it's got something to grip onto like that does that make sense oh this this navy and mango melody looks nice okay so that's the inside done um maybe you could have stamped in there as well what i did with this one was just used um where i die cut used it as a stencil and just stamped in there um, which looks quite effective so let's go to the front so we're going to close the front down and um, we've got our two panels okay like so but we need to make the top bit so using the three biggest the biggest and then two down from that in these stylish shapes dies that I've cut out we're going to fix that on there but in order for it to pop out like it does here you can either cut punch or die cut some circles or some squares or just use a couple of off cuts like I've got here and you are just going to fold them in half now you can score these if you want to um, no one's going to see them but if you want them to look super nice and you just need a really crisp, firm edge on there, make sure you've got two shapes the same size. That's all I would say. Um, on one of the cards, I used a circle. On one of them, I used a rectangle. Um, this one, I'm going to use these because I've got them handy. And they just need to be smaller than the shape that you're putting on the top. So on half of it so mine folds like that i'm going to put some glue on it this glue is nearly at the end so i'm going to say a prayer that we'll get through the video without me having to run off so i'm just making sure that it's up to that middle line and then i just fold it over and just bring it a little bit more forward so that it's right on the edge like so and then that's the first one and the other one you stick on exactly the same so you put some glue on that side so it's sort of like a, an X X marks the spot so glue side down butt it up to that one like so and before it has a tight chance to stick too much just make sure it's right to the edge of the card okay like that and that is your mechanism for this to sit on. Bring those together and then stick your panels. So you're covering it up just like that. See, that's what I mean by you won't even see it. Actually, if I'd done that in navy, you wouldn't see it at all. But I've only just thought of that. I think I did it on the other card. Let me check. did it on that the same colour okay so I'm just putting some glue on my panel you could use double-sided tape whichever you want really um, everybody's got a favourite and you're looking to just put that in the middle of your panel so don't think oh I need to put it right up to the edge of there because you need a, a border all the way round and also you want it to look even all the way around. It doesn't matter that there's a line of navy through the middle because that just adds to it. What I mean by a line of navy is if I put that on there, you can see the navy through. Okay, now I'll do this side. Oh, 
No, don't run out yet. Okay, and breathe. Right, that goes on that side. Like so. Oh, I feel a ta-da coming on. So now, when that goes up like that, how lovely is that? I'm hoping you can see that. So bring that back down. This bit is just going to go exactly on there. So I'm going to put some glue on here. Now I've chosen to do three circles, um, but you don't need to do three, you could just do one. It is your make, it is your card. So I'm just going to get that in the middle and I'm just doing that by eye. Just because when the card's flat, you can see where the middle is more than if you're trying to do it on the side. So what happens is that comes up and that will be like that because it's got that mechanism. Ooh. Now the next one, I've done these in white. Looking at it there, I think maybe they would be nice in the pink, which if I look on the back of the card, is petal pink yeah that would be nice i might change those because mm, i think white's a bit harsh but let's have a look inside it's got white inside so let's go with it otherwise i'm just messing you about so i'm going to do something that i wouldn't normally do i'm going to put them all on um, because i'm not doing any stamping i I am going to add some punch shapes and I want to be able to tuck them in the side so I'm only putting dimensionals in the middle. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have the punch shapes around this angle so I'm going to put this slightly over here. Just still going to have a bit of a navy border but it's not exactly in the middle. And then this one I'm going to do the same because I'm going to do this sentiment here like I did before so I again I'm going to put them in the middle and I'm just putting three because they've got no weight on them they've not got to hold anything up so that will go there like that Ooh, I'm excited What am I going to put around the side? I've got this punch. Um, what is this one called? The bow punch, I think it's called. It's really good because you get to... I've used shaded spruce. Why have I used shaded spruce? Because it's on the paper. And you can just tuck those in. I will put some glue on them in a minute. But they're perfect for just tucking round, overlapping. And then these little spriggy bits, you can add some gems to them and just tuck them in as well. So that's a really handy punch. And then the other punch that I'm using is this one. Ooh, and this one is flowers and leaves, I think. And I'm going to cut or punch some of these flowers. So I haven't got any of them prepared, so let me just do a couple of them. And there's two sizes. There's one big and small. It's a bit messy where they jump all over the place. And what do I do? I usually, I've got an old uh, mouse mat, but I just shape them with the end of a ballpoint pen, like that. This is actually an old Stampin' Up pen, but it's perfect for this. It's got a really big ball on the end. So that's going to go on there. That's going to go next to it. Or maybe over this side. That one. Oh, that one's leaf is chopped off. But I could tuck that under. Oh, let's do that. Let's not waste it. Just because I didn't check it was all in the punch. I could tuck that under like that. That looks nice. Okay. And then what else will I use? So 
So the meadow dyes, I don't know if you've got these in your stash, but they cut out these shapes. I lost the other die. There's one that usually goes on there. Um, and then what I do is I just colour them in place. So before I cut, push them out of the card, so I've got this really old poke tool because I've lost my take a pick. Oh, oh, that's not going to stay. So let me get that out and show you. So I die cut them and then I leave them in place. Is that going to come out? Yeah. Then I put them back in place like so. And then I colour them where they are because it's much easier. So... That one sometimes they just stay in place by themselves so stamping blends you get a light and a dark I always start with a light and again this is um, shaded spruce so I am gonna do this super quick and just color over the whole thing oh there's a butterfly there I don't want to color the butterfly just like that and then I'm going to pick up some detail with the uh, dark one. So anywhere that I think might be darker. So on the underside of the leaves, on the underside of the flower. Around that bit there. And then probably down the bottom of the stem. And then back over it with the light one again just because it helps it all blend and then you have to wait for the magic to work so what I mean is when you look at this in a minute you'll be able to see the shading but now if I pull this off oh that bit's not going to come out see it's perfectly colored okay I've also got these butterflies here now let's do them we need them in a light blue which I haven't got um, but I've also die cut vellum so I do it in the dark color underneath and the vellum just makes it more subtle so it's not so in your face so I will do that as well and I will finish my card so this is going to go on here like that what else haven't I done I'm aware that I'm waffling now the thinking of you sentiment is in this stamp set so I'm going to do that in navy on there um, let's do that okay let's take these off and let's finish this properly Thinking of you. Let's get that stamp out of the way. And some navy. Put that on there. There you go. So what I tend to do, because it's um, a long one, uh, where's my bone folder? I just just shape it slightly and then put one dimensional on top of another just in the middle so there's one there's another one on the top and that is enough to hold it and I'm just going to put that there so it just shapes it round okay let's sort these out glue these in place so I'm just putting some glue on the back of the leaves only in the bottom few leaves Whoa glues run out okay just on that bottom one just so that I can get that to stay but still stick out this one and that's going to go probably there like so 
behind it. Like that. And then this one. Oh, is that rose wanting to come in? We'll go here. Or even behind there. Yeah, let's do that. Because we're not going to see it, are we? I'm going to put a gem on there, which I haven't got with me. This one tucked under, doesn't it? Just under there, like so. And then this one will go there, like that. Okay, my butterfly is going to go there, but I need to colour that. So that's the front of my card done. Ta -da! Now the inside piece, this piece here, is going to have that flower. So I am going to use some tiny dimensions. Just to put on the back and that will be enough to hold it. So I'm going to put one there, one on the leaf, oh goodness. One on the leaf there, just so you can't see it. And then a big one, or two, on here and here, like so. We're nearly there. I feel it is going to be a ta-da. And I'm just going to put a bit of glow on the edge here because I don't want that hanging loose. Okay, so turn that round. That will go there, like so. And that will just hold down. Let's move these all that way. Oh. Okay, move them that way. Just got to add the butterfly. And that is our make for today. Ta da! And here's the second one I made. And here's the first one I made. So, free, what were they? Vertical easel cards, all very different with different Stampin' Up sets. Which one's your favourite? Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's the cat trying to climb. Thank you for watching and putting up with my waffle. I'm really sorry. I do feel like I had waffle today. Um, but I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed showing you um, how to get the most out of some of the stuff you've already got. and mixing it up with some new stuff. Um, if you've liked my video and I haven't got on your nerves too much, subscribe and press the little bell. Um, that will notify you when I post a video every week. Um, if you're in the UK, you can shop with me at creativeyotaway.co.uk or you can find me on Instagram and Facebook for more inspiration. Thanks for watching. Bye.